Um, so we're going to do it with our gray and our black. I'm going to get, I'm actually just going to work out of my cans of paint, which I have right here. I have a brush, I'm using my house brush or your three inch big brush. Um, they're a little damp on my bristles, so they're not straight up dry. I have one for each color, so I have a brush for black, brush for gray, and then a blending brush. You can use one of my big fitches, you can use um, a big house brush, whatever you prefer. I have not yet gotten this one damp, so I'm dampening the bristles. Again, I don't want them wet and drippy, I want them damp so they're not dry and I'm not just going to pull my paint right up. Um, so, the major factor in getting this done is working fast. So, I'll tell you, I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Both rely on you working fast. So I'm starting just on one side, really quickly slamming my gray out, on. making sure I take my paint all the way off the edge of the board. I don't want to leave a highlight. So I'm not painting all the way to the middle quite yet. I'm like going to bring my wet paint towards my wet paint. And yeah, like I said, the key to this is quickness and like getting a decent amount of paint down on here. Um, and you can see my brush stroke kind of wants to pull so you see a bit of the white peek through. Just be aware of that so you don't overwork it. So again, not bringing my paints quite all the way up to each other. I know my black's a little strong, so I'm gonna bring my gray towards it as opposed to bringing my black into the gray. I'm gonna go from here towards there. So again, getting more paint on my brush not drippy, but it has a decent amount of paint. I'm not being cheap with the paint. So, I don't want to brush my brush right into this gray too badly, because I don't want to muddy up my colors. Okay, so my blender, again, and this is a key thing, always keep the orientation of this brush the same. I'm gonna show you the way I've seen other scenics do it. I don't like it, I don't get as good of a control, but I've seen this done to really nice effect. Like you do a little dragon, so you're starting to mix that third value. Yeah, that was kind of and then brush it out. Yeah. yeah, exactly, that's how she does it in the book. Yeah. So she likes that, and I can, this is actually good if you're doing a really big, mm -hmm. big blend. I am not as much of a fan of it, because you'll see it starts making kind of, it gets a rhythm in that value. Mm -hmm. So, this is what I like to do. I just like to do a lot of back and forth. So I want to try and bring my dark this way. But again, since I know my dark takes over, I'm pulling my light a lot more into the black. You have to stop doing this before it sets up and dries. It's starting to get to the point where it doesn't want me to touch it much very soon. You'll see that happening when you get a streak and these get trapped. Those dark brush lines, that's my paint starting to dry. So I want to soften it out to make those more subtle. But yeah, it's starting to tack up on me. So at this point, you can spritz a little water if you, want, if you need to keep working. Be cautious though, because your water will lift your paint up and thin it. So you can also, Careful that you don't drip all over your nice dark side when you do this. I'm slapping a little bit more of my live colors back in. I'm brushing all the way across so that way if I get a little muck in there, I'm just like softening it out. So, and again, I'm not going to go right on the line. I'm just going to bring it here where my blend is transitioning. So, not so much on this. But sometimes your blending brush will have like the dark side and the light side. Mm -hmm. Keep it oriented the same way if it's doing that. Um, wipe excess paint off if you really pull a lot up because it'll just keep adding dark goo. So this is, I'm going to bring it in. It's half dry. See, this is starting to freeze on me. I would like to get a little bit more of a wide blend and not as hard of a shift. Um, 
But this is also very much something if I was doing in a really big unit or across the whole floor, I would build this up with a series of washes to kind of help get this zone really pretty. Okay. Um, by doing a kind of directional scumble blend like this, mm. and then bringing transparent black mm. out into this area and softening okay. it only with okay. a tool, either a roller, big brushes, if you get a really thinned out so it can go to the tiniest, mistiest consistency through a hand pump sprayer, mm -hmm. it has an airbrush-like effect, yeah. which when viewed from distance, just looks like a really nice soft haze. Mm -hmm. So that's actually my favorite way to do it on a big floor, um, is dark and then mm -hmm. take a washy path out and then, okay, mm -hmm. go less further across so I'm just slowly feathering out and building towards my deepest value. So this is a little quick for me. I, I would let this dry and take another a second stab at it mm -hmm. to get a wider blend. Okay. Any questions about that? To get a wider blend, do we just bring like the black a little bit closer yeah. and the white yeah. over here? Yeah, I definitely put my gray down like all the way to here. I think, <laughs> yeah, somewhere about there. So kind of letting it shift a little bit more. Um, yeah, cool, sweet. Thank you guys for your attention. Um, have fun. If anyone wants to use any of the things I have, you're welcome to. Cool. All right. Um, yes, well, no, sorry, those are the bait, those are the colors you need. The white is right here.